From former political leaders to business executives to old friends, today hundreds of people gathered at a celebration of life for former mayor Jake Godbold. The people's mayor, as he was known, who wanted everyone to call him just Jake, died last month at age 86. His memorial was held at the convention center, which was converted from the old Union Terminal train station to an asset for the city under Godbold's leadership. Four choirs performed during the event, as well as jazz musician Longino Parsons. Godbold's casket was carried into the exhibition hall, following behind a New Orleans-style jazz band. Speakers included former mayors Delaney and Peyton, longtime business leaders, and former state senator Betty Holzendorf. He was an ordinary man, just like any other father, any other working class person, but he did extraordinary things. He made this city what it is. Now, I don't think any of us can imagine how wonderful heaven is and that no one really, if they're up there, would ever really want to leave. But if Gene weren't already there in heaven, I could see Jake talking to God and saying this. Now, God, this heaven's a very nice place, but it could use a little improvement. Maybe a big river, maybe some more catfish and bass and redfish, Maybe a football team, and I don't care if it wins or loses. Gene, of course, was Jake Godbold's loving wife who died in 2013. News for Jack's reporter Jim Piggott spoke with some of those who attended this celebration of life and is joining us live on the South Bank. Jim. You know, Tom, lots of people came up to me before the ceremony and after just wanting to talk about Jake. And they had ideas about how he should be remembered. One man was saying, hey, how about building a statue here on the South Bank with Jake just waving at the city over many of the accomplishments, the things that he brought to the city, the city that he helped build. As Jake Gobbold's family entered the convention center behind the band plane, when the saints go marching in, Hundreds of Jake's friends and others were also there. They wanted to be part of the celebration of Jake's life, and they had plenty to say about the former mayor. Oh, he's done a lot, though. Oh, oh, I wouldn't be here if he had, uh, if I didn't think he done a lot for the people, for other people. And I think some of these people up in Washington should uh, learn a little from Jake Jarbo. Jake was not only a politician, they say, but a friend that they could count on. What do you think was his biggest accomplishment? Oh, he had so many. I, I would say uh, what he put in with the team. Uh, back in the day, he and I used to eat barbecue out to the old pig. It's not there the on uh, Lim Turner out there by uh, Edgewood. Yeah, he's just a great individual. So many accomplishments he did. And I think I know that about Jake is that he loved his barbecue. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, good man. This man says he helped with one of Jake's biggest accomplishments, consolidation, when Godbolt was on the city council. Thing, and I had the, the final vote, the deciding vote on the consolidation. It was, it was nine. It was uneven, and I had to, and I was a black hat, and I switched to white, white hats, and it passed. And you know, nobody ever criticized me, said one word about it. It was just the greatest thing vote I ever made. If you had to sum up. Jake's accomplishments here, what would you say would be his biggest accomplishment? Uh, just, yeah, uh, it's so, he did such enormous things, hard to pick out just one, but uh, he was always there and he always told the truth. And that truthfulness is what many people say they loved. He did a lot for Jacksonville and he also um, gave my grandmother a key to the city, Mary Lewis. Why did he do that? Um, because she was such a good person, and I really miss her. And now I'm going to miss him because he did so much. And that's what a lot of people told me, that he did so much for the city that Jake is Jacksonville and will be remembered. We're live from the South Bank. Jim Piggott, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Jim. I think that's a great idea. I mean, the statue and him waving. I mean, can't you just picture it? I know personally, I just, I miss his voice. Every time you come into the newsroom, you know, you just knew he was here. He felt his presence, too. I don't think I've ever met anybody who had more friends than Jake Godbold did. And 
as we stood around today, I was proud to be one of his friends, as we stood around today before the ceremony began, it was uncanny how all of us said the same thing. We miss his phone calls. A whole month has gone by and there's been no phone calls from Jake. I talked to him twice the weekend before he died, once on Saturday while my wife and I were at a wedding and a wedding reception, and then again the next day. He didn't text, he didn't email, he picked up the phone and he called and he loved calling his friends. And whenever you saw that it was Jake Godbold calling, you always you answered took that call. right away. <laughs> and the fascinating thing was he always knew what you were interested in. He, he knew instinctively that I had, did not care for fishing. He never talked to me about fishing, but he knew that I was fascinated by politics and city affairs. And, and those are the things that he, that he talked to me about. And we all miss him. He clued right into you. Yes, and he did. And you, that's exactly yeah, what was important. For 45 years. A long time friend. We're all going to miss him.